Hey, how's it going everybody? This is Craig Peters here from Sound Iron, and on today's tips and tricks, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to set up contact with this. Uh, magic tricks not included. Now the Expressive E Touche SE is a really awesome piece of hardware and what's cool about it is that it allows you to interact with your software on a little bit more of a tactile approach and as you can see it looks like one big giant button but the thing is you can actually there's different parameters for the bottom, the top, left and right. You can push in and sort of engage uh, the top and bottom at the same time. So I feel like anytime you can actually interact with the software on a physical level, it's only gonna be better. And it's a little bit more fun and adds to the creativity. So uh, let's go ahead and head into the computer and I'm gonna show you guys how to set this up. All right, so getting started, we're gonna be doing this in Cubase. And the first thing you're gonna wanna do is open up an instrument track and we're gonna use the Lie software. And then you're just gonna to wanna to select the virtual instrument of your choice. So let's go ahead and do contact five. And then after you do that, you're gonna see this little eye blinking over here. That's your instrument view. And this is pretty much gonna open it up uh, exactly as if you know you normally look at contact. And then what we're gonna do is let's load in, let's load in something that has uh, the ability to change between different parameters. So let's, uh, let's do sonospheres two. This is a fun one. Now, you're gonna see, I have this open already, but this is the automation window, and this has all the different MIDI CC parameters laid out, and you can see that none of these are assigned. And what we're gonna do is we wanna be able to go between two different sound sources, and as you can see, as I push this in, the, it's, the software shows you sort of um, which, which different gestures are controlling different aspects of the touche. All right, so let's go ahead and start connecting some parameters to this. So over here, let's assign this to volume, and then the next one we're gonna to assign to the X fade. And then that same one, we're gonna use it to control the volume of source two. This is gonna allow us to be able to go from source one to source two and be able to sort of swell into it. And then after that, uh, let's go ahead and assign some effects because that's one of the really cool things about it is that you can assign effects. And these are all within the effects rack tab that comes with all of our libraries. So uh, let's, let's, say, let's say we wanna assign this one to the mix knob and then maybe we can you know, change some of the parameters if we want, you know, different, you know, different, the phase are doing different things. And then let's say maybe uh, if we're doing some hybrid synth kind of stuff, uh, let's go ahead and let's do some distortion. Maybe we can uh, assign some distortion to one of the parameters. So let's use this next one. We'll assign it to the drive knob. And then after you've set all these, let's say for the source, uh, let's see. I think this is, yeah, this is a pretty cool sound. And then we'll, maybe for this one, we'll set it up to be like a pad. And then the next thing that you're gonna wanna do is then go into the Lie software and then change the different parameters. So we want something controlling the bottom, the top, right and left. So for the first one, let's, let's set this to this one and then we're gonna set it to the bottom. The next one, let's change this to zero one and then we'll set it for the top. So that way we're going from source one to source two for this one, we'll set it to the right. And then this one, this is the one that's our distortion. We're gonna set it to the left. So you have to make sure that you assign your different parameters to the different gestures or else it's not gonna work. And then now you should be able to see as you move, you'll see the different controls change on the UI. So we're good, so that's what we want. So now let's just go ahead and, and play something and see what happens. So now we have our different sources playing. Now let's go in between them. Now let's bring in some effects. Let's bring in some grit, a little bit of distortion. Now this is only using the effects that, that come within uh, the, the effects rack tab. So let's say you wanna add your own effects. Let's go and uh, let's bring in some, some good old trusty reverb. Now let's just go ahead and bring this back, dial into the, the decay a little bit. This is real quick, but just so that way, just so that way it's not completely dying off and it has a little bit more of a tail. All right, cool. So now let's, Let's play around with some stuff. So what's great about this, like I was saying, is that if you're scoring to picture, it makes it really easy. It makes automation really easy. All right, so now let's go ahead and just record something in. That way you can actually see 
how we can control and manipulate the different parameters afterward using automation if we want to. So let's just uh, see it record and see what happens. So if you were scoring the picture or something, you can have it where maybe the guy's like slowly coming into the building or some kind of scene where it's getting a little bit intense and you want to bring in some grit. Back it off a little bit. And that's just shifting it to the right. Let's put some grit, go to the left. stop and then after that just go into the MIDI let's get rid of this and then you can see that you have the different parameters laid out so you can actually if you want let's say let's say you want to draw and make this a little bit cleaner you can do that you can clean up some different MIDI you can make it do different things so let's say you want to do something like that or you want to have this swelling a little bit a little bit cleaner so that's that's kind of the cool thing is that you can be a little bit more hands-on with it, a little bit more tactile, like I said, and then from later on, clean it up. But it's a lot more fun and a lot more creative doing it hands-on than versus just drawing it all in. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's it. That's how you set it up. All right, so that about wraps it up for this episode of Tips and Tricks. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to give it a like as well as subscribe and hit that notification bell. And let us know in the comments what kind of modulation controllers you guys like to use for just inspiration and overall creativity. So until next time, I wanna say thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.